The following podcast is a Dear Media production. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. <laughs> Welcome to the Probably Podcast stage. What up? I know it sounded just like Taylor Swift, but <laughs> it actually wasn't. It was Kyle Jonas, my lover, best friend, confidant. You guys know him. You love him. The whole city loves him. Um, I'm going to get points dropped for my podcast if you keep jangling ASMR in that ice. Can, is, is that what it sounds like? Just take a big sip. Okay. Guys, we're coming to you live from the Probably Podcast studio with truly one of my best friends. And here's the dealio squealio. Um, <laughs> one thing about Kyle, he, he always keeps you on your toes, but something about Kyle is that his toes are not okay right now um Kyle he people wonder you know what we have a whole conglomerations of things that I wanted to start out with I don't know which one will segue <laughs> into which but they're all flowing nicely because a lot of people were like what took you so long to get on the podcast and we can get to that later there were many road bumps along the way but Speed bumps, I baby. thought if he canceled this last one or rescheduled, if he rescheduled <laughs> that's my favorite word word of the week or if month. he <laughs> rescheduled this one I was gonna literally cut his throat and he was like, and he called me and he was like, hey, so I can definitely come. But, and I was like, but, and he was like, but like my gout's flaring up. And I was like, Kyle. Health and wellness, baby. That's me. Some do a T. You know what? Like gout is nothing to play around with. Like it really is <laughs> it a really serious is condition. Yeah, I know. It's horrible. If you or your loved ones suffer from gout, you may be eligible for just like a lot of sympathy from me. Like, yeah. And compensation. Like it's horrible. I'm compensation. Like, I'm like limping everywhere. Like a. Rabbit. You could you, you could hire a um, lawyer. You you could say you got it from something else. Oh, like people like force you to eat really fatty <laughs> and delicious foods and drink alcohol. The king's diet, baby, that's, as they say. That's <laughs> literally what people get gout from. They literally say it's because you eat like a king. Yeah, I'm like doing hopscotch everywhere. I can't even walk. <laughs> like my foot is literally like throbbing. King in the Kyle. Worst way. Yeah, that's me. King Kyle. Um, so he's got gout. It's flaring up. He's a little bit better, but he was like, I don't want to drink today and I, I obviously i invited him to stay over for dinner after the podcast and i was like i'll cook something he's like i can't eat fish and i can't eat red meat and i was like cool chicken and water got it james yeah. will be so happy and then we got here and i was like kyle i'm sorry but i'm not having you on the podcast and not drinking so i'm gonna have some wine and he was like it's okay i'll just have sparkling water and then whenever we were sitting here he looks at me after he's like got on his phone and he was like okay actually can I have some vodka and i was like which actually kyle doesn't drink vodka he drinks tequila with me Always. Today I die, baby. So I looked at him and I go, you want some vodka? And he dead ass said, yeah, I just asked my mom. She said I could have some. <laughs> I like, no, I literally, because I'm so strict about this stuff because I'm so scared it's going to like do a 360 on me. And literally, I've already experienced so much pain. I really can't do it again. But like literally, thanks for having me on the Ellen show. Like I literally walked in and there's so many cameras. I was like, all right, it's time to call mom, phone it's, a friend. I'm, I'm bringing in the forces. We got to have some alcohol. So we got some uh, <laughs> vodka, which do you think maybe you have gangrene? Maybe we'll have to amputate your toe. What is that? Gangrene. Like it's you when you get like, like infected. Lake? No, it's when you get like a, something infected. People got it in the war all the time because like they got infected, it got gangrene, and then they have to cut their arm off. No way. Yeah. Ew. I know. Wait, that could be a thing though. You could have it. I mean, I did have a telehealth doc appointment and she literally was talking to me about like my symptoms and she was like, are you sure? It's like not like, have you ever been tested? And I was like, no, it's gout. Like literally my dad has it. And, he, and she was like, <laughs> she was like, are you sure there's not something else wrong with your foot? I'm like, no, I have no cuts. Like what can I get cut from? I literally in closed toe shoes every single day. I have three outfits. It is, you are a cartoon character. You have three yeah. outfits and he doesn't take his shoes off on the boat, on the water, on the lake or three anything. Hours. Reduce, repeat, recycle. Reduce, repeat, recycle. <laughs> you really, you're doing wonders for the environment. Um, in fast fashion. No fast fashion sure. for Kyle. Um, so yeah, so he was like, We're, I'm going to have some vodka. And so I'm like, so funny. You're going to have vodka instead of tequila. Okay. And then it reminded me of this time in our lives, beginning of our friendship, where I gaslit yeah. the fuck out of Kyle. <laughs> and I told him that like we were out at maybe, uh, well, I'm sure we were at Tin Roof. Wait, I think we're at like, yeah, or it was like your apartment before. Maybe we were pre-gaming before and he was like trying to get vodka. And I was like, Kyle, just have tequila with me. He's like, I don't drink tequila, I drink vodka. And I was like, Kyle, you know what vodka mm -hmm. is? Vodka's literally potatoes. And he was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I was like, no, literally. I was like gaslit him. I was like, you fat fuck. You're just eating potatoes <laughs> all day fucking long. You need to drink tequila. And he was like, wait, are you fucking serious? And I was like, yeah. Seriously. And he yeah. was like, okay, um, I'm going to switch. And he, like, I don't know. I think you just took my word for it because I just gaslit the shit out of you. And then you fully switched for the rest of your life. You switched to drinking tequila. tequila. No, literally till the day I die. And like, I wouldn't re like regret one thing about it. But like, I literally have been telling everyone since that day, I've been running like a Rodin Fields pyramid scheme on everyone <laughs> that I am around because literally I am like, 
vodka is potatoes. Like Tito's is potatoes. Like, right. There's no. You guys in are eating French fries and cranberry juice. Well, and then you see all the memes about how tequila is like saving your bones. Like it's milk. So I'm like, I'll take it. It's like like milk. maybe, maybe I wouldn't have gout if I was drinking tequila. Do you think? T- do you or think, vodka? Do you think vodka is 100 percent potatoes? It has to be. What Look is at this it? bottle? Wait, shut. So it is. It says 100% Wait, potatoes. Wait, so 100%. Yeah, fact check. It is. Wait, so. Woody Creek, shouts out, not a sponsor. Someone gave me this bottle. Woody Creek, Colorado vodka. It literally says on the front, 100% potato. <laughs> Wait, so then how, do they like bake the potato? Kyle. <laughs> like, no, do they bitch. boil it? I, no, I don't know I, the I don't, specifics. I, I'm not a scientist, Well, it does Kyle. say potato, so we have some facts to I investigate. I think it's fermented from the juice of a potato. If you are, uh, guys are vodka yeah, experts. Reach Mm-mm. out to me. Also, I don't yeah. think you're a fat fuck if you drink vodka. You're just like, <laughs> you should just drink tequila instead, okay? <laughs> you're just like drinking potatoes. All right, so people want to know, uh, I always forget how we met. How did we meet? How did you come into my life? I'm so oh, glad wow. you did, but like, where did it come from? You know what? I remember this exactly. Where did it I was from? Where out- did it go? <laughs> Cat and I do. Um, no, I remember literally I was out. I had just moved here. Like bars in Texas, like aren't open till two. They're only open till one. So like literally God, I went out. Why and, like, did you guys have to go home and do what? Plow the fields in the morning. Nothing else to do. Got but it. basically, so like I was like, we were out. We had gone out. It was like literally my very first, if not second weekend in Nashville. And literally my world was like spinning because like I, n- I never drank, drank in college. Like, oh, oh, your world was yeah. actually spinning. No, no, drinking. no. So I literally was like, I was like, oh my God. So like literally we go to Tin Roof just to like calm As down, do like a nightcap and then peacefully <gasps> go home in my c- carriage by Cinderella. Not you um, going to Tin Roof to calm down. Literally, but there was actually no one there. But guess what I saw? A redhead. Me. And she was standing at the bar and um, I was with a couple of like our mutual friends and literally I walked up to you. And um, I remember I introduced, like, you were like, oh, like, did you just move here? And I was like, yeah, like, met them on Bumble BFF, who I was with. And it was, like, a big, like, ordeal. And, like, I, I think you, like, actually kind of, th- maybe you did it in the back of your head. You were just being nice. But, like, I, I literally. I said I knew but, you, maybe? Yeah. No, 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 no. You had said, like, um, you're like, oh, my gosh, like, amazing Bumble BFF. Like, you were, like, intrigued about it or something I probably like was, because it probably was a very new thing. It had to thing. have been new. It had to have been new, actually. Because that was a long time ago. It was a very new thing, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But, I mean, it was great. And then Steve Chase. Was the next time I saw you. Steeple and then chase. from there on, we Steeple flew chase. to the motherland. We just flew together. We just flocked, flocked together. Um, all right. What was your very first impression of me whenever you met me? A lot of people ask this. Tall. Okay. But also, like, <laughs> I knew one redhead back from, like, Texas. And I don't know if they're, like, fossil fuels or, like, fossils <laughs> there. But, like, there's not a lot of redheads in Texas. And all my Texas people, I feel like, can maybe vouch for me. If not, then I'll regret this later. But that is so there, funny. I, like, really, like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I feel like you, like, definitely stood out and, like, oh you, yeah, so like, you, just you were very put together. Stunning. And then, basically, synonyms were laying out there and I can't get your head get oh too big. But, gosh. no, like- it was... It was, yeah, I met you there and then Steve Chase and then I guess. You didn't want to say I was like funny or like a good person. You're just like it tall was five and seconds. red hair. It was five seconds. And I, you were actually posting on the bus because <laughs> we're about to lose service. And you were still doing social media. So <laughs> I was doing get social it. media for Kristen. Well, now still. I can like completely relate. Oh my gosh. I remember that we were going to Steeple Chase and I had to post me like so everyone's always like, you know, Kristen was so mean to you guys. I'm like, you guys, I really was bad at my job. Like I had to post that day and I forgot to post. I would have been killer at my job had we had that thing that Instagram has now where you can schedule posts. That would have been like amazing, but we didn't. Yeah. So I had to post Life something changing. at a certain time every day, different times, certain days. And I was like, we're going to lose. Everyone's like, yeah, no service once we get to the field for steeplechase, which is like a horse race. And I was like, fuck. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, this necklace is so cute. <laughs> from go from day to night and i'm like go 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 and everyone's like raging and like chugging mimosas and i'm like sorry guys i really have to post about this bracelet wow i was not a good employee no. um yeah i made for great tv though can't deny it okay um all right Titanic next thing let's talk about why kyle you um this is the third attempt on your life and mine for you coming on the podcast because i didn't answer that chain message <laughs> That's exactly why, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't answer that text message, chain message from 10, 15 years ago. Does anyone have someone in their life, an adult, an adolescent, that insists on every (laughs) holiday sending you one of those very long emoji-filled text messages that say, 
happy Easter. Get your big <laughs> bunny balls over here to suck this Easter clit. Like that's literally Kyle Sinsos. He's like, I'm bouncing on these bitties eggs. Like it's literally like so many emojis, so many dicks, so many words about cum and jizz. And it's like, and you'll have eight years of bad dick sex if you don't respond to this Easter bunny bussy. Like it's so crazy. And I'm <laughs> he sends them every fucking holiday. Leave the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> every send time. Send and leave. Evaporate. <laughs> and evaporate. I'm like, Kyle, if you send me one fucking more of these, and he's like, ah, did you reply? The money is going to get you if you don't. Yeah. And I'm always like, okay, Kyle. Um, yeah, he's that person in my life that sends those chain mail messages. Okay, so one time he was supposed to come on the podcast, and he didn't because I'll give you this. Kyle is a very sensitive person, actually. Like, I know everyone thinks he's funny, and he's like. I hate to admit it, but I'm horribly sensitive. You are, and that's okay. We can so be don't sensitive. Talk bad about me or anything. <laughs> Looking at you guys out there. Don't you fucking say one <laughs> word about Kyle. <laughs> Literally like a PSA. Please. Seriously, if you hurt his feelings, I'll break your fucking neck. <laughs> um, okay, so anyways, I I get it. It was the day after. We were so excited to record a podcast after going to the Eras tour together. And best time ever. Best time ever. But then the whole Eras tour gate tiktok gate happened for both of us i was like this fantastic cool podcast about it he was like i am deeply deeply upset about this yeah, and like i post-concert depression to like 100 usually i'm just sad because i'm not there i was sad for multiple so multiple true. reasons and i was like okay 100 you don't have to come to the podcast and then another time he did some weird scheduling conflict and then another time yeah. you're like you can't come anyways it's like the fourth time time I'm, management baby time management okay we'll get to that under me all right let's talk about how you are one of the long la lost Jonas Brothers. Do you guys want to know something funny about Kyle? Kyle's family has a company <laughs> that's literally called the Jonas Brothers, blah, blah, blah. Like in Texas, yeah. he has this. And <laughs> when I first met him, he was wearing these shirts that said like the Jonas Brothers, but you could tell it wasn't a Jonas Brothers con. Because if you if, I, if you asked me, I'd be like, yeah, of course, he's a huge Jonas Brothers fan. Like, I'm sure. <laughs> but I was like, where is that T-shirt from? He's like, it's my dad's company. I was like, haha. And I was like, he's like, no, seriously. And their company's been around for like ages, like literally way longer like, than. Yeah, it's ancient. Like the actual it was, Jonas it's wild Brothers. <laughs> because like growing up, like. Aren't they from Texas? Yeah. So they're from like Dallas, Fort Worth area, which is completely ironic. But, Wait, like, did you guys ever think about suing them? Okay, <gasps> no, but like literally could be onto something great. But I will I think say the time is now. How are you going to afford this? all your gout medication? Okay, so never mind. We skip dinner. We just call the lawyers and everything. And I we used just to be get a paralegal. Good skill. Um, you need to get out of a timeshare. <laughs> <laughs> I can help you out. Could possibly need one. Um, but what I was going to say was like growing up, like we would always get like fan mail to like our company. <gasps> no. So like, yeah, we get posters, Sharpies, all the no. things because people would see like in Literally Texas. the ads and stuff. Yes. And we'd get it sent. And like, I was too young still to like really know what, like who the Joe Bros were until like, I think I hit like middle school. So like, yeah. I never knew it, but like literally that loads and piles. of It's so mail. funny. Oh my gosh. You should have like signed some back and pretended you were their cousin. Honestly, if I was old enough, I definitely would have. And who was out. the other brother? Joe, Kevin, Nick, Frankie. Frankie. Poor Frankie. Vanderbilt's very own. Or Band or Belmont, actually. Wow. Oh, he went to Belmont. Yeah. What's the deal? Why wouldn't they let him in? He was just too young. He was like a baby. Don't know. Couldn't tell you. Oh, you don't know? You're not like a Jonas Brothers super fan? No. I what mean, I love them, but like, I literally don't know like two or... Th I mean, maybe you got like... Ship I have my, What know. did you grow up watching? How? What's our age difference? I'm 30. You're... 29 baby oh my god why do i feel like you're like four years younger than me wait really i've always thought that you were like literally the same age well and we it, are <laughs> well i mean yeah what year did you graduate high school but i feel like uh 2013 you guys that's where we're friends <laughs> okay i graduated I in 2012. Just said like 2017 i always say that like college year college years okay so what did you grow up watching like like i was a big disney channel girl until disney channel got cut off at my house because cable got taken away it was really weird <laughs> and then nickelodeon <laughs> but then nickelodeon got taken away <laughs> Um, Lizzie McGuire, like that's so Raven. Oh yeah, love. I'm trying to think. Did you watch Wizards of Waverly Place? I actually did not really like Me it. Me either. I didn't like that and I didn't like Phil of the Future. Oh. I loved Phil of the Future. What about and you? even Stevens. <gasps> I only liked the movie. I did not like the show. I don't know. I could never Kyle. get on it. Like Tawny Brawny. Beans. <laughs> and people say that I look like him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I have seen 
po- I've got tagged in posts of people saying at Kyle Jonas, like, your celeb look alike, which thank you for thinking of me. But that secondly, not no, your like, celeb. Save the po- yeah, that's like, not your celeb look alike. Do you know who? Um, that's Repulsive. your celeb nickname, though. I'm going to start calling you Beans. 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 I do love bacon. So that's true. Maybe Big that's piggy like boy. A- you loved, he raised pigs. 50, 50. So you oh. love and hate pigs. Yeah. If you yeah. like bacon. Um, okay. So do you know who I get all the time in my DMs that you look like? Everyone always messages me this. Neville. No. Oh my I god. I get that these one are, too. I get these are I terrible look No, it's actually really it's really bad. Those are those are not your look likes. People tell me all the time that you look like Zach Bryan. Wait, I'll take it. it like I my, it's always in my DMs. Was like, it he looks stage like coach? DMs. He looks like DMs. I mean, he looks I like Zach Bryan. Like it then. No, not at stagecoach. That is actually wild. It was recently. Yeah, no. It's I mean, I'll take your, it. Your um facial hair. I shaved. For, did you shave for the podcast? Mhm. Sure That's did. so kind. <laughs> Guys, I've been obsessed with this brand for so long now. Basically, since I found it, I've been obsessed because picture this. Cashmere, silk, all of these luxury essentials, but at unbeatable prices. Okay, so Quince is here to transform the way you shop with a range of high-quality items priced within reach. Okay, we want cashmere that we can afford, honey. We want silk we can afford. And they really do have 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters for $50. That's right. I'm not kidding. Organic cotton sweaters, washable silk tops. I love their silk dresses. And timeless 14 karat gold jewelry. But the best part is Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than the similar brands. And this is by partnering with top factors. So this is like their secret sauce, right? Quince cuts out the middleman and passes the savings on to us. And I love this about them. They only work with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices with premium fabrics and finishes. So fast fashion, that's not what this is. This is genuinely ethical, which I love. Okay, so I I've gotten some of their cashmere sweaters. They have this blue color that's divine. I have it in a camel color. I just love it. You cannot beat the feel of cashmere. But like I said, I'm never trying to pay cashmere prices. So Quince has them for affordable prices. I love their 100% washable silk slip dress. I have it in a champagne color. And I also have it in like a forest green color. Let me tell you guys, which is also really nice if you put the cashmere sweater over it. But since when is silk washable? Like I love Quince for so many reasons, but Honestly, just being able to indulge in affordable luxury is so, so nice because, guys, you know, this is a finance podcast. So go to quince.com slash probably for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash probably to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash probably. Um, all right. Razor and all. Let's talk about how you grew up and... One thing you guys don't realize about Kyle is Kyle is he is a manly man. OK, he he loves watching sports. He loves watching sports. He loves um, going and doing outdoorsy things. He's a country boy. You guys, he was born and raised in Texas. If you met his parents, his mom and aunt are like salt of the earth, amazing people. And then his dad literally wears like a 10 gallon hat. He's like a cowboy yeah. in Texas. Yep. And Kyle grew up showing and raising pigs. Let's talk FFA, about it, baby. Future Farmers of America. I did obviously I had that. One? No. I had that. Did you grow up to be one? No, but you could be. You could still be. I could do it as like a hobby. I think people still do it. I'm actually not kidding. I think. You think I people don't... still farm? No. Well. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Kyle. A few people I mean... are still farming. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. To each their own. <laughs> everyone, everyone's out there just doing it as a hobby, but like we're somehow still go have grocery stores. Couldn't have been like complete opposite. But yeah, here we are. are you... Raise pegs. Uh, could you do, like, do you miss ra- What did you do to show pigs? What constituted a really good show pig? Like what was a winning pig looking like? What was it doing other than like, so this is the part where like, I should like phone my dad, <gasps> phone a family member. Um, no, I like, I truly like after doing it for so long, they all just got so big to where like, I think there's like, this is so weird, but like cuts of the pig, like there's like different like sections. I don't know. But I thought but, you like, were showing them while they were alive. Yes. But like, it's like the thigh and it's like the like, like they're like poised and like how they stand and like you get the little whip and like you can take the eye off the judge. Like it was like literally like. You can't. Wait, sorry. No. Sorry. Hold on. It you, was like teachers while you're taking like tests, they just stare at you the whole time and you have to stare at them and you, just like go like that. You can't. Sorry. You can't take your <laughs> eye off. <laughs> you can't take your <laughs> eye off. <laughs> You can't take your eye off the judge, some but you have to whip, like do the little whip towards the pig and stare at the judge at the same time. Yes. And then now, which was way before my time, I can't make any promises, but there's no way that I would have gotten like, have you seen the horse, like the, the stick horse of people doing like obstacle courses? Would you have done that? 
I think I actually would have. I think you would have been into it. I don't take anything back about the pig showing, but like definitely doing like cute little obstacles courses with, with like a little like stick horse. Stick horse. Do you think you um, growing up and just like figuring out yourself and stuff like do you think you'll ever be a Furby? Absolutely a not. Furry, a furry. <laughs> furby. I-, I love Furbies, but no, absolutely not. Ew, that's like gross. I didn't even know what that was until like two years ago. <laughs> Like literally disgusting. Um, all right, Kyle. If let's you're into, ta- you're into it. If you're into it, then you are still fucking weird. Um, okay. Me? Work-life balance. Everyone wants to know how you do it. And I'm here to tell you guys, fucking Kyle doesn't have a work-life balance. Kyle is working 24-7. I will give that to you because everyone just sees us having fun and drinking. Should we take a sip? Yeah, let's take a sip on that note. Everyone just <laughs> sees us having fun and drinking and like living our best lives. Down. And Kyle is the most social person I know. But one thing about Kyle, he's always working. Like one time I got so mad. It's rare that I get mad at Kyle because he's really fucking hard to stay mad at. Um, especially with like the 16th time he rescheduled this podcast. I was like, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. And I was like, that'll get him. Um, but realistically, like it's just so hard to stay mad at him. But one time I was pretty angry because you invited me to Bar Taco to go have a lunch. And I was like, perfect. And we sat down and we ordered margaritas and they came and then we ordered food. And we had not been there for less than five minutes. And you got up. You're like, hold on. I have to take this work call. And I was like, oh, my God. He's always on a fucking work call. He walks away. He's on the call for, I would say, 45 minutes. 40. And this was like a weekend. 45 minutes. Guys, I was like. I am so angry. Like, why did I fucking come here? I can be at a restaurant by myself, but yep. you, you're, he's always working. We're all working every day to try, try to find that balance. So for sure, you could just work a little bit harder. No, I actually, I probably should. But you grind but your dick off. I really appreciate that about you. If thank Kyle's you, boss you. is listening, you, he's incredible. You. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, let's Stars get down. Oh my God. You know what we should talk about? We both didn't drink until we were 21. Wait, you didn't either? I didn't drink until I was 22. Ha ha, beat ya. Wait, you did beat me. No. Wait, that's I always thought that I was the oddball out. I didn't drink until I moved to um, Nashville. Oh my God, James, uh, James signed Kyle up for the Coach James Club. And yeah. then James was like, right, so Kyle just hasn't even opened the program. It shows me he hasn't opened it once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking time away. Self-care you know time. Take some self-care time, babe. Yeah. Get your gout healed. Come back stronger than ever. Truly, let's hope. Come back. They don't call I him will. the comeback kid for nothing. There we um, go. Okay, yeah, so I didn't drink until I was 22. You know what's so funny? I don't know if I've told this story in the podcast before. If I have, fucking sue me. <laughs> but I didn't start drinking until I was 22. And the way that when people like didn't understand that I didn't drink. So I didn't drink in high school. I didn't drink in college. And then I go to Nashville and I like, like I'm obsessed with this boy. And this boy happens to be a bartender. Spoiler alert. And I was like, yeah, I don't drink. But I didn't drink for any like moral reasons. You know what I mean? Like I was just like so afraid to get like drunk. Same. Wait, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Is it? No, 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 no. Is no, that no, why no. you didn't drink? Yes. I was horrified. Like because you like hear stories about people yes. like, getting like punished and like putting like punished. vodka and like <laughs> punished <laughs> like putting like vodka in bushes and then the bushes die and like stuff like that and then like what? they get caught like i don't know like and everyone like running away from cops and stuff i was like i was so horrified go back to the <laughs> go back to the putting vodka in the bushes and the bushes die you mean pouring it on the plants like i mean like if like <laughs> I, you know what take with that what you will i'm gonna say i'm not gonna go far we're gonna it. we're gonna move on from that but i just need you to know that you said that okay no i agree all my friends were like getting hammered in high school and throwing yeah, up and the then sonic all my- slushies yes and four logos yes and then they were all just like they were acting up you know what i mean like they were just like doing things i didn't want to do and i was like so I, I think you and i both have a bit of a control thing like we were the people that always want to this is not to do with drinking but this is to do with like wanting to drive to an event or something so that we could like leave when we want to leave like i don't ever like and now you don't really have to worry about that because you could always uber but like i always like being in control of myself not other people but myself and so i think you're like that and so i was just afraid too i was just like if i get drunk i'll take all my clothes off and tell everyone my deepest darkest secrets and run around naked well and so that's what i thought it was i thought it was like a vortex of like you drink once of alcohol and you lose complete feeling of everything anything you know because everyone's like going around like being crazy like t and tamara and like high school like yeah literally i like like, that freaks me out so like so what when did you drink for the first time 21 and i this is actually like kind of cool i mean yeah vegas 21st birthday it was like cute it was like the countdown my parents were like so happy to bring me to vegas and like you went with your parents for your first birthday yeah and i got in like one of like my friends um back in like college but like literally went and then like took a gummy bear shot and like guess what i was guess what i was ordering the whole weekend vodka cranberry no, I was ordering a half shot of Malibu with Dr. Pepper. Wait, rum and, like a rum and Coke. Yeah. But, but like, rum and Dr. Pepper. That's not that weird. And that's my isn't. brother still but drinks I was doing that. Half a shot. Like, like 21. Everyone's producer like Courtney loves shots. Producer Courtney loves Malibu. 
<gasps> so my don't, queen. Don't Wait. throw too much shade. No, I she do loves like it. I haven't beverage. taken it forever. I mean, I went from that to vodka sprite. When we go to certain restaurants, Courtney and I, if I see something on the menu that's like double chocolate dipped coconut swirl strawberry <laughs> fucking daiquiri, I go, Courtney. And she goes, yes. <laughs> she was like, that's mine. <laughs> and every time Courtney orders one, I go, that looks really good. She's like, want a sip? I'm like, ah, I want a sip. I want to try a sip. <laughs> that Tuesday is also really, is like really good. Oh, I yeah. Realize, I like, I Where like, are those at though? It's like, it's usually, well, actually, New they Orleans. probably have them. Yes. And then they also have them in Vegas. Like the mm. last night we were there, I remember getting one. I like did like the dairy, like a dairy queen, like flip over being like. Did it stay? It yeah. It was, it was amazing. Let's talk about, um, we didn't drink to a year 21, whatever. Yeah. Fun. Cool. But. Oh, I was going to tell you why I drank tequila. And I don't know if I told this story on the podcast before, but basically I moved to Nashville, didn't drink, was not planning to drink. And then I like fell in love with this boy that I'm like, I'm obsessed with you. And he was a bartender. And I was like, perfect, cool. Like, I don't think I even ever told him I didn't drink. I literally think I was like so obsessed with him that the second he was like, what do you, well, here's to be fair. I did, did you ever fake drink growing up? I fake drink. I would say I wanted to drink and then I would just like not drink it. In college, I would do like the shot thing, but like right. other than that, I like. No, not I even, like I would just make sure I'll have a blank and then I would just like hold on to it and nurse it all night and not drink it. So I remember I was like, he was like, what can I get you to drink? And I was like, we'd already met outside of him being a bartender, but then he was like, you should come by when I'm working. I was like, cool. So I like went by, there was this bar called South. Did, were you here when South was a thing? Shannon, I moved here two, three, maybe weeks after it closed. <gasps> and it's like the, like, you really I missed out. Yeah. I have the worst look in America. Like I, I, the worst I, I would have lived there. Like I've heard you so where I still hear them. Like the South I literally would have like slept in the bunk. Lived in Nashville pre 2016. When did you move here? 2018 17 yeah if you lived here in like 2016 15 14 like you would have been at south it's not a memory it's not there anymore but it was amazing anyways he worked there and i was like he's like what can i get you to drink and i was like wow what are you guys drinking <laughs> and he was like uh tequila soda i was like same he was like really and i was like yeah yeah and this was actually pre tequila having its pr moment where tequila like shot up and everyone loves tequila like just by itself this was yeah. like pre that so i was like yeah i'll have a tequila soda and he's like cool 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 and i was like cool cool cool, cool. and i remember i like took a sip and i was like oh, but i was like whatever and then i didn't drink it and then i i like faked drinking for probably about a month and then one day i was with my roommate um at the time and i think i must have accidentally taken too many sips of something by accident and I felt like buzzed and I explained oh, no. my feeling to her. I was like, wait, something's going something. She's like, you're buzzed. And I was like, oh, wait, this is so fun. And she was like, yeah. And I was like, what, what if I drank more? She was like, try. And I was like, okay. Oh, gosh, and then I just like drank more and drank more. And then I was like, wait, I'm having so much fun. And she was oh, like, I know. And A I didn't take world. all my clothes off, run around and tell all my secrets. So I was like, fun. But yeah. that's how I basically started drinking by accident and then also on purpose. But then I started really drinking, right? And then I was dating the bartender and then he mm -hmm. was like always pouring me nice tequila shots. Yep. And then I go back home and my friends, I go back home for like Christmas or something. And all my friends are like, oh my God, we saw on Snapchat because we were still on Snapchat at the time. <laughs> and then we saw on Snapchat, you drink now. Like, are you actually drinking? Like we saw you like for real taking shots. And I'm like, no, I drink now. They're like, oh my God. And so we were still 21, right? So we go back home or 22. Yeah, we were 22. We go back home for Christmas and my girlfriends are cool. Like, let's go out. I'm like, cool. My friends are still ordering at 22, like Malibu and Cokes or like cranberry vodkas, like whatever. And they were ordering because we all had no money. They were ordering like well drinks, whatever. So yeah. we go back and I'm like, I had no money at the time, but like I must have saved up my money for this. I don't know. But like we go out and they're like, so what do you want? And I was like, oh, I'll just do probably like Casamigos on the rocks. And they were like, bitch, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, now that you drink now, what are you going to have? And I was like, yeah, Casamigos on the rocks. They were like, what the fuck? Mythbusters, baby. Yeah, and I was like, I'll just shoot it. And they were like, what the fuck? You went from zero to 100 real fucking quick. And I was like, Wait, that's yeah. amazing. And all my friends were like, you were so funny. You didn't drink anything. You just went straight to straight tequila. And I was like, that is my personality summed up. Wow. Stuck but with you. It stuck with me. And here we are. We're not drinking potatoes. We're drinking tequila and wine. All right, James and I aren't really like super picky or anal about too many things, but one thing that we will not waver on is our sheets. We are so crazy about our sheets. We just want them to be the most cozy, softest things ever. So imagine literally the softest sheets you've ever felt. And now imagine them getting softer with every wash. Because right, that doesn't happen. That's not a real thing. But it is a real thing when you buy Bowling Branch sheets. And with Bowling Branch sheets, you can discover this new level of softness. In a recent customer survey, okay, 96% of people said that Bowling Branch sheets get softer with every single wash. Like, 
That's tried and true, baby. And I'm a part of that 96% because it really is crazy. The more you wash them, the softer they get. The sheets are made from the rarest 100% organic cotton and a buttery and breathable weave that gets softer and softer over time. Like I said, and you can feel the difference. They got a 30 night worry-free guarantee. It is amazing. Honestly, if you were looking to buy a new set of sheets for a guest room so that everyone is obsessed with you, this is the thing because they're also really not that expensive. Like they're very, very affordable, but it feels like the most low luxury quality you've ever seen. So you feel the quality immediately. It's breathable. I cannot stand when sheets are like suffocating you. And these are not that they're soft yet really breathable. Like I said, they get better after every wash and we're just sleeping better. Like, you know, when you're just sleeping so good because your sheets and your whole bed is just so cozy. It's like a cloud. They have so many colors, by the way, like they genuinely have we just go with white because I get spray tan, so I like to bleach them. But whatever color you want, they have it. It is loved by millions of sleepers. Guys, they have over 11,000 reviews, so that speaks for itself. And like I said, it comes in 13 versatile colors, all sizes. It is designed for incredible sleep for all sleepers. And my favorite thing is that it's made without toxins. All right. So it's free from synthetic pesticides, formaldehyde, and all those other harsh chemicals that I cannot pronounce. So to fit the deepest of mattress, they are labeled with top and bottom tags. Guys, that's such a game changer. Like you can see which part is the top and which is the bottom so that when you're making your bed, it's so much easier. But if you guys want to sleep better at night with the softest sheets ever from Bowl and Branch, then get 15% off your first order when you use promo code probably at bowlandbranch.com. That's Bowl and Branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D branch.com code probably exclusion supply cd site for details you guys people were asking a lot of people were saying like what are some of your favorite memories about each other like blah blah blah. and i was like it's so hard when you get asked that question like if you asked me and taylor that question we would both be like uh even though we of course have one thousand memories together it's just like a hard yeah. question and so anyways if you were on this podcast once a week we could always tell funny stories but yeah. when you just like try to vaguely think of them all but then kyle was like oh don't you remember my favorite story about you and i was like no and then he's like, okay go ahead go yeah so basically we were at tin roof and we were just having fun um did you have a perm did i have a perm I, i'm almost positive you did no i've never had a perm in my life <laughs> i think it was Actually, like something long i had a perm in middle school but it didn't work out i just remember it like super curly maybe i just curled my fucking hair that day kyle maybe okay well i was like i definitely was in la la land but anyways it was probably when i had a head full of weave because remember i just took my weave out in covid so i probably had a bunch of extensions in it was always like maybe. long and really curly actually yeah that probably makes sense okay yeah um yeah favorite story sorry went off the rocks there um but basically i remember we were at tin roof and we were just like drinking hanging out and like a few hours go by and this girl like walks up to you <laughs> and i literally thought shannon was like pressing for life alert i like literally turned around and i thought like have you guys seen that like have you seen the meme of like a potato like a potato flew around or, like no. you remember that on tiktok it was like trending courtney no. do you a potato flew a around potato flew. and it was like it was like I i'll show you after this but basically it was like a spinning potato and literally i just remember like looking like i remember ordering or something and i turned like literally to like my left and you were just getting like rocked like a skip it <laughs> so, like, so this know. girl i'll tell you from my point of view i was getting rocked like a skip it here's the thing i love people ask me all the time I'm like, and i'm not saying i'm fucking madonna or anything but like nashville's a small town like i know that yeah. like people follow me on instagram whatever and people ask me all the time on questionnaires on q a's and stuff on instagram like do you mind when people come up and talk to you I, I, you guys literally i love it like me my ego please say hello like if you see me out say <laughs> hi it's literally my favorite thing in the entire world and i actually genuinely love meeting you guys and so i mean that i will say you do have like the nicest like supports like i've yes. I'm always like super blown away not that i never I've got wasn't, but like it is truly the best trolls and the nicest yeah. supporters like there is like for every you know bad thing that said there's just the nicest human out there so for that i'll always be thankful <laughs> and so everyone is always so 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 kind that comes up to me so yes please come up to me and say hello i would literally love nothing more again i know i'm not fucking beyonce but yes i love that anyways some people do not have any you know alcohols involved we're at tin roof i'm sure but like some people just don't have i wonder if this girl remembers this i wonder if she has her story and she's like yeah that shannon ford girl so anyways audience. what <laughs> audience can we uh phone a friend so anyways we sometimes people just don't have social like awareness of people's like boundaries. And I just don't think in general, you should ever like, really like, I like, I love hugs. I love all that stuff. But like, I don't know. Yeah. This girl came up to me and she was <laughs> like, Oh my God, something, 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 something. And she was like already like really in my face. And I was like, Oh, hi, blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, da, 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 da. and then she goes like this. She's like, Oh my God, I love your hair. She, <laughs> yeah. she, she didn't do that. She was just like, and I love your hair. And like put her hands like, 
not that aggressively, but like put her hands like in my hair. I was like, I love your hair. Full like Maybelline. Yeah. And I don't know. Maybe some drinking was involved for me. Maybe I was just like, I don't like to be touched. <laughs> and I just thought to myself, you know what maybe would make her be like weirded out and kind of realize what she just did. I'll just do it back to her. Two wrongs make a right, baby. And so I <laughs> just grabbed my hand and I put it in her hair, like really in her hair. And I was like, no, I love your hair. <laughs> She was, by the way, very taken <laughs> aback. And I just looked at her and she was like, yeah, well, anyways. And I was like, yeah. Tug of war. Yeah, we, we just, <laughs> no, I love baby. your hair. No, I love your hair. <laughs> and, no, like, I, Kyle, uh, the funniest part about that is not that I put my hand in this girl's hair and she put her hand. Listen, I know there's a lot of people, like culturally, there's certain rules about not touching people's hair. But I think let's just touch no one's hair. Like, let's just not put our hands in anyone's fucking hair that you don't know. Yeah. And yeah. so anyways, I just remember looking over at Kyle and Kyle's face was so red and his eyes were so big and he was like, <laughs> I, I had no idea what was going on. I was literally about to like flee. I was like Paul Revere, the British girl. Like I was so like literally about to like Dead. freak out. I had no idea what was going on. I was to horrified. this day. Kyle loves to be like, remember that time that girl was like, I love your hair. Yeah. And you were like, I love your hair. It was like a back and forth. Y'all. It was like literally. Like, if you're out 10, there and 15, you're listening to like, this, yeah. I'm sorry. I just. I didn't want to be yeah. touched. And I thought maybe a good response was showing you what it felt like to be touched. <laughs> Anyways, you are you were a lovely girl. She was a very nice girl. She was very nice. She was really nice. She and I think she was like, when I did that back to her, she was like, what the fuck? And then I was like, that's what I wanted. I wanted her to be like, what the fuck? And for me to be like, see, you did that to me, though. What the fuck? Okay, maybe anyways. She's a hairdresser. <laughs> you know I don't what, know. Kyle? Everyone has their thing. <laughs> maybe she was a hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> maybe she was a hairdresser so interesting. um all right it's time kyle it's time mm. we're at minute 35 it's time to get to the taylor swift of it all should I we drink it for this so kyle is but not really quite literally obviously he's not like the number one fan of taylor Swift. like i know that there's someone out there that's like a wackadoodle dandy that's like following her air miles and like crazy stuff but like on the scale of like normal Swifties, if you were to put all the really normal, cool Swifties in a room, you're up there. Like Kyle. Wait, that's so nice of you to say. No, you are. Like Kyle knows so much about Taylor Swift. He is genuinely so obsessed and loves I used to her be so like much. Super involved with like her fan club and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Kyle, a, a couple questions I got asked were: There's this photo. We'll insert it here if you're watching on YouTube. There's this photo of Kyle at the 1989 tour when taylor swift still did meet and greets she doesn't do meet and greets anymore because once you get to a certain level of you know celebrity you just don't do them anymore and she it, it's a photo that i myself as one of his best friends i thought it was photoshopped forever yeah, it's kyle holding it was when taylor was like very thin it was her very very thin era okay. and she was you were holding her like a baby like you were literally holding her in your arms like a baby and you were and she was going like ah and you were like, ah, and I, of course, thought it was obviously Photoshop because he's literally cradling Taylor Swift in oh, his man. arms. And one day I think I said something like something, something, yeah, Photoshop. And he was like, what? No, I was there. I went to her meet and greet and like, that's a photo of us and I'm holding her. And I go, Kyle, that is not a real photo. And he was like, yes, it is. And whenever I obviously believed him, I was like, how did you get her? What did you say? How did that interaction happen? And how many times have you met her? Just that once? Just once. Yeah. No, that was actually The day you insane. met her, you held her. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Like, it was, like, wild because I just, like, remember um, it was in Dallas and um, I was still in college and I went with, like, a bunch of, like, close friends and, like, literally we made, like, a whole weekend out of it. It was, like, the best time. You met Ambry, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she was with me. Um, and, like, I remember being, like, taken back and, like, literally being, like, what? is actually like I was like freaking out like I literally thought I like won like Jeopardy I was like so happy like jumping like Price is Right like literally just won, <laughs> I thought I like won like a car like any like whatever so I go back and like literally um they like get us all situated and so we just like go do you buy meet and greet tickets no what do you mean it was from um it was from like literally like Tumblr so it was like what it was from yeah so break like, it down yeah so basically I would post like on Tumblr and stuff of just like it was like in between it was right around like red ended 1989 era and like literally would like post stuff like tagger and stuff um like getting like the cd like super cute like literally it was like me and, like my friends would always do it and so um i remember getting like a dm like a year before and like it was just like the you got a dm on tumblr uh no on twitter actually it was okay. like from like taylor nation and they like reached out and like um they just like asked like if i was going to a show or whatever get like told me i was going to dallas like a year later literally literally we go i hadn't heard one thing i'm literally like 
in our hotel room like we just gotten back from like lunch like the day before the show and i get like a call and literally like answer and it was like hey like um we see like you're a great fan like would love for you to come back like meet taylor or whatever did you think it was show. scam actually like surprisingly like no because you i literally like, was just, like real. i was like i have like this is and like he, she did i this. mean i could have like yeah i got kidnapped for all that but I know. you you knew she did this for her fans and stuff yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. um and so like literally went back and like literally talked to her like it was like the cutest thing ever like it was like so it wasn't a meet and greet it was like just like a personal thing yeah <gasps> like no, no no guys it was awesome it's literally like the number one like moment of my life like so I will it wasn't it. like you were in line at a meet and greet you like got a special moment to go back yeah. to meet <gasps> no, no no and it was like it was truly the most iconic thing ever and like she yeah like it was it was wild what like, you guys talk about Every, like basically like I talked about like college I talked about like she, oh my like God. she had like a bandage on her hand like that day or something so like she had talked about like how she had like slid it on like a olive oil like jar or something like that oh my God. literally I like uh, it's all ingrained in my head I, Forever. truly the best day of my life but yeah I talked to her like living back forth, like super personal like back and forth like it was so truly the greatest thing my brain always thought there's no way she'd let you pick her up and hold her because i thought you were just standing in line at a meet and greet and like you yeah. know where they kind of like go photo go photo which that'd be like bold <laughs> that's why i was like you're wild as fuck okay so after you got you 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 know established a rapport with her then you were like can i hold you like a baby so yeah we just talked and then i was like so i actually wanted to like scoop her up and like just be like like just like hold her like or actually that no, is no, what that's, you did no, no no going back vice versa okay so you i wanted, wanted to get, get on, on my back. back and like do like a piggyback pose or whatever because i saw something with like her and andy grammar and i was like oh this is cute and so i remember that and i was like oh like do that ask her. and then she literally was like well she was like wearing like a jumpsuit like or something and she was like i don't want to like rip this like do you, can you just like pick me up kyle never works she out asked never you lifts to pick a weight up. never does anything i'm she like uh, you, yeah like literally the moment. yeah and then like could have done squats with her like literally <laughs> no honestly james would have been so happy if i knew him back then oh my god your um, adrenaline's pumping so hard you just yeah. you just pick her up when you just fucking toss her it was like literally like that swim game like colors yeah like, no that's what that you guys red, in the photo blue. that's how he's holding her like he's about to dunk her head and go color red <laughs> and blue and like it's crazy maroon flip flip <laughs> um red yeah um okay so you are a huge fan. I'm a huge yes. fan. You're a huge your fan. Anytime I have a question about Taylor Swift, I'm always like, wait, who the fuck is this about? Because I know Kyle is like in the thick of it. So I'm always like, what the fuck is this about? And he always knows. Into so, the thick of it. Uh, into the thick of it. Into the thick of it. Um, Me and Kyle's favorite things to do together when people are like, what are your crazy stories? What are your, like, what are your favorite memories? I'm like, our favorite memories are us just driving and scream singing Taylor Swift together. Like that's. 1000%. I'll be like, do you want to go for a ride? And he'll be like, yeah. And we'll just drive around wasting gas singing. It's not a waste because no. it's genuinely. We soak it up. The most fun time of our lives. And yeah. it's therapy. And we just scream sing. Or sometimes we'll come over here. We'll drink wine. So fun. And then we'll just scream sing Taylor Swift as yeah. well. And then James is like, oh, I'm not going that again. <laughs> and then we're like, yep, it's our time to shine. Guys, the most important thing to me on any platform I have, no matter what, is to be transparent with you guys about my feelings, okay? And here's the thing. I feel like I've always done a good job sharing not just the highs, but the lows too. And if you guys have listened to this podcast at all, then you know, you know, I've had some really low points at times, okay? So now I'm stronger and better for them, but regardless, they still happen to me and they still affect me and who I am. And the number one thing I cannot suggest enough, therapy. Now you might not think you need it, but I promise you, promise you, it will make you feel so fulfilled after you do it. But I get it. It's daunting. It, it's a daunting task to try to find a therapist. I have so many friends who have honestly just given up on the search because it can take forever and then they feel uncomfortable when the therapy is supposed to be the exact opposite of that. But you got to find the right person for you, right? It's like dating. You, you just got to find your match. So it's such a personal preference. And I personally have used Talkspace to find my therapist because it is exactly the tool that you need for finding the right professional for you. Now, it was convenient to speak to them online and I can take my therapy sessions from the place that I feel the most comfortable, which is my own home. I love that. I love how my therapy sessions are online and at the ease and comfort of a space that I actually want to be in. Not to mention the affordability of it all. Now, do we all need helping hand? Yes, but can we all afford it all the time? Not always. So that's why Talkspace is so passionate about making therapy accessible to everyone. They even have a policy that allows you to cancel and get a prorated refund for any unused time should you need to. So a lot of people wait until something really bad happens to decide to get therapy, but I'm here to tell you that therapy is truly the most cathartic thing that I've ever given myself and we should all be doing it at all stages and phases in our lives. So therapy can help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times, and frankly, just be a guiding light. 
Talkspace can help with any specific challenges that you might be facing, and it's the number one online therapy platform with licensed therapists in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, substance abuse, relationship issues, and so much more. So as a listener of this podcast, you will get $80 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash probably. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash probably to get $80 off your first month and show your support for Probably Podcast, baby. That is Talkspace.com slash probably. Well, let's break down now our fateful night at Taylor Swift era's tour. Yep. The night to remember. The night to remember. Okay. First of all, pre that TikTok coming out, which I'm pretty sure is like, I hate to give her the, like, I'm not going to say her name or anything, but I'm pretty sure it's still on her fucking like page. Yeah. I couldn't tell you. I literally saw it. You blocked her. Yeah. I was like, I I have to go. (laughs) So Kyle and I have the best time ever. We are so elated that Turdy Lou and that whole crew from New York are coming in. They all came in. They were, they had a suite. We were going to join them in the suite, but they decided to do theirs on Saturday night. Because a lot of them were working, so they needed to come in on Saturday, on Friday, and then go Saturday. Anyways, Kyle and I had already bought. We were Kyle, not me. Kyle was in the trenches of the Taylor Swift American Express Worst four ticket hours master, of my life. <laughs> fighting <laughs> like, for my life. Hellhole. He was literally fighting for his life, and I had told him like, I don't care what the cost is. Like, we will be on the floor. Like, I don't fucking care. I was like panic calling you too, like multiple times. He was like, we gotta, should we get them? Never mind, they're out of the cart. Should we get? Okay, we got these. Never mind, they're out of the cart. And I was like, okay. So I was like, just run the card, Kyle. Just run the fucking card. So, anyways, we get these floor seats that we were so elated to get because, like, again. I know that's triggering for some people to hear because some people waited so long, were in the trenches, and then didn't get a ticket. So yeah. I understand that that's like hard for some people. So that being said, Turdy invited us to their suite. We were like, listen, we're not fucking giving up these floor seats. And I think at that point, we could have made some serious cash by selling the floor seats. Yeah. And I was like, no, ma'am, we are staying here. So that's just mm-hmm. to showcase our like just pure love and just elatement to be on Truly. the floor for Taylor Swift. So we arrive. I think I've already told this kind of the story on the podcast in general, but like basically no one was like giving us shade or throwing beef or anything around. Like she would did not say a word to us, yeah. our seatmates. We were standing behind the seats before the show started because we didn't want to like crowd her whenever we were just like chatting and yeah. talking and stuff. And then when the show was about to start, we came around and sat in our seats because we were the actually the last row, like the backest, the furthest back yeah. row you could be in the floor i mean i'm like we're on the floor but we were the furthest row back but yeah, but it all was that like means- squished so like we didn't want like we it were was very squished. like adamant about being like we'll stay out here as long as we can just yeah because we, like- we didn't want to squish yeah. her like we were so nice and then when we came back i remember i remember here's the thing guys i was dressed dun, dun, dun. insane okay <laughs> but like it was the motherfucking no. eras tour bitch no. like of course i was dressed insane but i get it like she probably saw me immediately and was like, this girl clearly had her fucking glam done for this fucking show. I was spray tanned oh, to God. the guads and I had like a sequin dress on that was completely see-through. Giving Shake It Off era, Fearless era, gold. Anyways, whatever. I never thought anything about it because I'm sorry, I don't judge people that are around us. So I wasn't thinking anything about the girl sitting next to us that was also enjoying the show. I will say, I was actually... Maybe not in the beginning because that was her whole like qualm with us that like we yeah. were getting her in the footage or whatever. But like for the most part, like I wasn't I really was cognizant of getting just you and I in yeah. the footage. And in the very beginning, you can see in my I think I still have like an Eras tour highlight. Like you can see that she's in a couple of the shots and then she's not. Yeah. But like her whole thing was that we ruined her concert experience. Like she posted this whole thing like PSA if you go to a concert like and you act like this girl. But here's her. Here's where she fucked up. She could have just said, like, PSA, if you're filming people, like, maybe turn to the person next to you and ask if they would, like, be okay with being in the background of the film, whatever. She could have really, like, slayed the house down and just fucking destroyed me. And everyone would have probably been on her side and would have been like, yes, queen, whatever, whatever. Like, if she would have called me, I would have given her the perfect approach to troll and she would have, like, really been successful. But instead, she got absolutely fucking murdered online because her approach was like so mean girl and nasty she was like psa this wannabe influencer that's a fucking nobody in nashville that thinks she's so fucking hot and showed up late to the taylor soda she didn't even get here on time and then you literally see me and kyle there for the three yeah two. there's like, bit, well even like phoebe bridgers before yes we're like bitch there's a fucking countdown and everyone in the comments loud. she's there during the countdown she's like yeah. she wasn't there for the openers opener opener i'm also like yes we were yes we no, were and like just like <laughs> we for- were just standing behind you to give you room bitch 
<laughs> like, I'm sorry. When I first talked about this, I was like, you know what? Like, honestly, like, it's okay. Now I'm like, cunt. <laughs> like, she's like, you ruined my little cousin's experience. I'm like, bitch. <laughs> like, I don't care. I, we really couldn't have been nice to her. And we like, were so kind. I mean, like, I've been to, like, past, like, shows and stuff, like, like i've been to pretty much every single tour like you've been to, to every single tour horn, not to see my own horn but like literally like i've about like dislocated my neck at other shows like i felt like i was like at like on like a water slide you know like whenever they like yes. cut you in and you're just like stiff and then you like go down not, that's literally what i thought i was like i was like so respectful we were so respectful and then i even did catch on i was like oh you know what i shouldn't get her in these videos so like you can see that she's not in many of the other ones smart and here's the thing too Here's the Eras tour. Like everyone during the Eras tour, we all saw it on TikTok. Everyone's, yeah. and this is what I personally love watching on TikTok. I loved watching people's reactions to the songs. And Kyle That's and I see. scream seeing these songs in our day to day lives. So, like, I was obsessed with watching the concert. I didn't need to get grainy footage. I mean, I got a ton of fantastic footage of <laughs> Taylor Swift, actually. Shouts out to the iPhone Zoom feature. But, like, yeah. I didn't need a bunch of footage of Taylor Swift's concert. I wanted the memory of me and Kyle there, which is like what I kept seeing on TikTok too, that I was obsessed with watching like everyone's like moments and feelings of them watching and listening yeah. to the concert and you guys there's something just so special and iconic about watching a concert for taylor swift through james i mean james sorry through where kyle's is where is he i miss him hello <laughs> um <laughs> through kyle's eyes like there's just something really fucking special about that so anyways i loved having those but i still love having those videos they're Same. fantastic so yeah. anyways her approach was terrible she fucked it up because she's like mm, want to be fucking lose your influence your girl and da, 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 da. and she was like filmed herself the whole time blah blah, blah. you guys at first my heart dropped Kyle's heart dropped because we immediately when we got sent this it was gaining some traction okay it was it was in, <laughs> I was eating a factor meal I couldn't have been more like innocent in my life like on a couch on a Sunday like we were like <laughs> so not prepared for this and I my heart dropped the same way that I find out like when people like talk illy about you like I don't seek that stuff out anymore so when people were sending it to me and it was like right in my face I was like oh no I had that like gut feeling that I'm sure you had too yeah and then all I had to do was click on the comments you guys no life-changing truly the comments were writing for us like you've never <laughs> even unreal. understood there was i think because i was like a, kyle and i were obsessively looking at them for a little while there was out of thousands of comments like two that were like yikes no concert etiquette <laughs> like yeah and like everyone else was like looks like two people having fun at a concert for me yikes this mean girl shit is not what taylor should want anyways it was just like everything was a-okay because like Everyone was so fucking here for us for that. Yeah. And it just reminded me of what the Taylor Swift community is about. Girls sticking up for girls. Life, love, and the pursuit of happiness. That's right. And you know what? I commented on it, which I thought was iconic. And all I commented was, I had a wonderful time ruining everything. Marvelous. I had a marvelous. There we go. That was yes, the one. Baby. Oh my God. This wine is going to my head ski. There we go. Um, I never podcast after 5 p.m. Courtney's like, bitch, you used to podcast at 9 a.m. and take shots of tequila. But not anymore. Uh, yeah, so that was Got our... a nine-to-fiver over here. <laughs> <laughs> Hail here, brother. That was our um, concert abuse that we experienced. And yeah. again, I think we're liable for compensation at some point. True. We have to be because I also haven't even been to like a Drake... Actually, I've been to one Drake concert. Ooh. And that was the other thing. I was like, I looked like I was going to okay. Drake. I was like, how? She... I literally... I dress like this every single day. Wait. Cartoon character syndrome. She... It's back. That's another way she fucked up. Yeah. She was like, they're not even fans. She was like, Guys. he looks like he's... Okay, Kyle biggest swifty in the world but kyle is just not the guy that's coming in wearing like the glitter costume or the jewels on his face he's just not the guy wearing the taylor swift you could actually i could have seen you wearing like a taylor swift maybe merch shirt but you guys know yeah. i mean i love it like kyle truly. wore what kyle always wears a black t-shirt and a pair of jeans you, you looked fabulous kyle thank you you looked amazing and you, you looked wonderful and she wrote like it was so fucking weird she was like he's not even a fan he was dressed like he was going to a drake concert and he was like i don't mean i'm like dying because i'm like kyle's the biggest swifty in the entire Very world ironic. it was just funny anyways so yeah Ugh. she fucked up with her mean girl approach and that was her downfall i could have helped her be a good troll and she could have really crushed it but she didn't and she didn't ask for my help so she got nothing yeah, I'm very sad. And none for was, Gretchen Wieners. Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm what's nuts. your favorite album for Taylor Swift? Red. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, my least. Uh, wait, really? Yes. Wait, what's wait? I mean, I love All Too Well, and I love the All Too Well ten minute version, but and whenever I met her, I was gonna ask her to sing that, but she already picked out a surprise song that night. Wait, there were surprise songs back when she toured. She would do like one on 1989. Um. But yeah, I think mine ended up being like And 15. she sang all too well? No, no, no. She she sang 15. I was going to ask her to sing. I was like, so like, have you picked like that? Oh, was like, you were going to ask her to sing. One of the last things that I was like, I was like, all right. And I should have just said it because after like. She wouldn't have told you. Well, she said that she already picked a song, but like literally like moving forward and after like all that, I'm like, 
she talks about all too well like she talks about how people like come up to her and are like i didn't realize that you love this as much i was like i wish i just would have oh so you would have been one it. of the ones I that said to her said it. i just wish i would have said it but one of your biggest regrets in life yeah probably yeah. so what did you what did you saying 15 wait that's what we got that's what we did get oh my gosh Maybe like I'm a tra- like I'm magnetic to 15. Oh my god, you're literally a magnet for 15. Our <laughs> surprise song was 15. It's like Aquarius, is that like your like song? You know, like those memes. Yeah. You swipe. <laughs> yeah. Aquarius 15. <laughs> Can't get away from it. Um. Yeah. Okay. No, so that was our surprise song. song. I'm not, like Kyle and I are very. We weren't disappointed with 15. Listen. I. Um. Who was uh, it? Sorry. Why did I just forget her best friend's name? Uh. Wait. Why am I forgetting? Her best when you have a best oh, friend. Oh, oh, you're talking about Abigail. I thought you were Abigail. talking about mine. I was like, who? No, 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 no. Abigail. Abigail was there at our concert in Nashville. Wait, yes. That's why they sang 15. To be honest, it was we were, so cute. We were really close to the tent that we could see. So like, I was like looking like it was very. Cute. It was cute, but like a cute little shout out. But I'm still like, Love. I got really jealous of everyone else. I get other surprise songs, but it's fine. We'll be appreciative. Well, and I wanted um, what I could have, should have, or yeah. what I should have, could have at this point in all much together. But I re- watch now. Everyone's going to be like, you aren't a fan. Um, <laughs> come we're for me, fans. guys. I'm ready. You guys, we're fans. The Swifties we're just, are coming. <laughs> we're Taylor Swift fans. We're just drunk. Um, <laughs> no, but we got, that was Sunday night. We got to, yeah. The and, rain night. And I was and, like. Oh, I'm so, I'm sorry. I know you guys love, Taylor loves a rain show. You guys all said you loved a rain show. I am so fucking glad I was not there for the rain show. I would have hated it. I'd I would have swept away. I would have hated it. Me don't like that shit. I would have not been happy. Um, okay. So what's your favorite era of Taylor Swift? Like not her era's tour, but like, what's your favorite era that she's been in? It doesn't have to be 1989. Really? That was, yeah, very quick. Okay. I loved like the like crop top and like the like, what are they like the little like skirt things? Like, yeah. Like what are they called? Did you like, when I was, was like, obsessed with them. dating Harry Styles. Like you loved that version of her. Wait, I, th- so I loved Calvin. Oh, that was her. Age, I, yeah, it was, yeah, 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 yeah. So like the I teacher liked corrects Calvin. the student. No, <laughs> no, but no, I love that. I always forget they dated for so it long. Was, yeah, I feel like it was like a year or two. Remember whenever? Like that. Remember whenever they broke up and then someone like commented something and he commented back like, "She's working like, nah, I'm good. She she can say whatever she wants. I'm good. I'm just sitting here eating my cereal, minding my business." And then he like wrote and was like, "Sorry, someone hacked my account." <laughs> like what? <laughs> no, Calvin Harris, you wrote that. No, one thousand percent. Like Calvin, you responded to a comment, and it wasn't even that crazy. But you wrote that, and he like his publicist account was like Calvin's account was hacked. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it's like no, it, was, it like, wasn't a non-thread thing. Yeah, it was like no, it wasn't hacked. Yeah, um, no, he's okay. guilty. What do you agree? Guilty. All right, get a taste of M. All right, it is a hot new collection of craveable intimates from Maiden Forum. And I love Maiden Forum so much because they are a brand with a whole lot of history. They have been around since the very first bras, and now they're bringing you a new kind of classic, which are basically the chicest basics you've ever seen in your life. But they're anything ba- but basic. They're just like amazing. So M is a collection from Maiden Forum, which is a brand, like I said, with a hundred years of innovation and category leadership. They basically wrote the book on bras. And when it comes to bras, I feel like we as women, we, we want someone to know what they're doing. So M is their next juicy chapter and you have to feel it to believe it. I try to show it on Instagram, but like you have to feel this fabric to see this yummy, buttery, soft feel. It is feeling way more expensive than it is because it is such a great style that will not break the bank. Okay. The price point is just amazing for the quality of the bras and on trend designs that are made from stretchy, comfy fabrics in incredible colors. I am obsessed with their blue color. They have, it's like this gorgeous cobalt blue. It just looks so good. And then of course I know it's not a color, but they have this nude that is the perfect nude. Cause it gets, it gets tricky and it's a perfect nude to put under a white top. It doesn't show seamless. M can be worn as innerwear. Like I was just talking about or as outerwear. I wear that blue one like to the gym or just in general to style it. You can style it to your taste, create looks that serve you or for no one else to see. So M is cheeky, playful, confident. I want you to feel as confident as your bra makes you feel. And that is what it does. Okay. So if you guys want to try out M's fierce new fits with gorgeous details and innerwear that is cute enough to actually wear out, because y'all know I'll be wearing bras out to the club. Okay. So visit maidenforum.com and use code probablypod20 at checkout for 20% off your first purchase. That's M-A-I-D-E-N-F-O-R-M.com. Use code probablypod20 for 20% off your first order. What, okay, everyone wants to know about her and Travis. Do you think they're in game? I do. I think so. Okay, obviously, one thousand percent. Do you are you like loving her being in love or whatever? No, no, no I love it so much. Me and, too. Like, I'm just happy that she's like out and about. I feel like Joe like kept her in like in a fucking cell. But do you think it was him or her? I don't know because I'm all about like a private think, relationship. I don't think Joe. I I don't know why me. I'm not trying to stand up for the dude here, but why do I feel like he wasn't like this has to stay private? Like, wouldn't he want the publicity? 
Maybe. Like, I think she I was know. like, I'm, you guys, remember in Miss Americana? She was literally like, you guys oh. forced me to stay away. I like literally hid myself because I thought that's what you guys wanted. That's horrible. Yeah. So I feel no, like she I, was yeah. like hiding her relationship yeah. and stuff away. And then she finally just found peace and happiness with Travis. So she's like, okay, fine. I'll show myself. I oh, love seeing yeah, her in no. paparazzi photos and going to that. dinners with Living Blake. Best life. Just having her best life and best time ever. Um, and then it. just wearing all of these fucking snake boots and making everyone think Reputation was coming out. And then she's coming out with the fucking new album. TBD, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah, I cannot wait. We'll have to do a listening party with you guys. No, I'm so excited. I really can't wait. Me too. I feel like it's going to be some of her best work. Just even like the like, yeah, like the covers and everything, like all the vinyls just like rolling out. I'm like. My favorite albums are Folklore and Evermore, which is not what people ever really say. I love folklore. Evermore actually. The one is like my favorite. The one you do love the one. Evermore is probably more so my favorite than folklore. I love. I can see that. Um, What did you think about her and Joe? Did you think her and Joe were going to last? I thought they were going to get married. No, I thought it was like, I thought they were done. Like I thought they were like carving initials and like trees. Literally. And he was like writing on her songs. Like, does he still get credit or does she have some like write up? That's like, you'll never make money again after this. I actually don't know how that stuff works. And like, I'm actually very curious to know because I'm like, cause I still love sweet nothing. So sometimes I'm like, I shouldn't play this. He's just going to keep getting money. Smart. We got to exile it. (laughs) Smart. (laughs) Take it off the record, Taylor. If you're listening, take it off the fucking record. Okay. Um, Pim Das baby. Let's see. What's one of your icks that you have for me? Hmm. Go ahead. I'll start. One of my icks that I have for <laughs> one of my icks that I have for Kyle. There's two. One, it's not an ick. It's a compliment and an ick. Kyle is Bring a steel on. vault. He will not say shit about anyone. It's really noble of you. But like, I'm literally his best fucking friend, and I don't know why he like. It'll be like a a really innocent tidbit of gossip that I'll be asking about. I'll be like, oh, so and so that you were just with last weekend. Is she still dating so and so? And he's like. I don't know. I don't know. And Couldn't I'm like, you. you do know. And he's like, who? What? He's when, like, where, why, how? <laughs> no, it's weird. I don't know. I don't know. He immediately avoids. And also, I'm not in the business of making my best friends feel uncomfortable. So I usually like pull back. But like, I always forget. And so I always ask him I'm like, oh, yeah, so and so. Whatever happened with her and da da da? Or like, oh, my God, did she get fired? And he's always like, so the weather. <laughs> he's always like, I don't know. Weird. Oh, anyways. And I'm like, oh, my God. And it's a good thing, right? Because I know that anything I tell Kyle, he'll never tell anyone else. But also, I'm like, fucking spill the tea, bitch. <laughs> like, spill the fucking tea. But he won't. He's such a fucking steel vault. Like, he really is. Unless it's someone we, like, just mutually both just, like, don't fuck with. And he's like, oh, yeah, let me fucking tell you about this. But, like, I'll be asking the most innocent of questions of gossip. And he'll be like, hmm. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm like, you sign seal delivered. Fucking no. Okay, to the that's grave an, it goes. That's an ick, unless it applies to me. And then one time, you don't do this anymore, so it's like a past ick. But one time, Kyle did this for a solid like six months straight. Six, for six months straight, he did this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he did I, this. And at one time, I got so angry because oh. I always was like, don't do that. Don't do that. I never noticed. I, I don't think I realized how angry you were. Like, I thought that, like, probably half the time I thought that you were joking. And sometimes I was like, eh. This one day, I was like, I'm not <laughs> fucking around, Kyle. If you, if you do that one more fucking time, I swear to God, I'm literally. So Kyle would do this thing. I don't know what it was. Like, an anxiety tick. He always goes, it's an anxiety tick. Like, no, it's not, it's bitch. <laughs> He would go, okay, you guys are going to be like, what are you fucking talking about? But this is what he would do. Yeah. If there was any silent moment, if there was any silent moment in a conversation, there like I mean any silent moment, he would go like this. <laughs> uh, he would fart. It was more of an inhale, <laughs> exhale. No, Some it people wasn't. take deep breaths. I did that. I no. don't know what. <laughs> Kyle. I would literally, Courtney's not okay. <laughs> it was would, always like so. Uh, Kyle. It, it would always just happen. Kyle, we would be like, so, someone would be habit. literally being like, yeah, so I don't know. I just had a really, <laughs> really hard day at work. And he'd be like, uh. <laughs> 21 days to make a habit. And I like really went with it. I and stopped he would do it. And then, and then I'd go, Kyle, I'm serious. I fucking do not like when you do that. It really fucking annoys me. And he'd go, okay, sorry. Uh, like, and I, <laughs> at that point, it had to be messing around with you. It had like, to have been. And I got so angry. And he doesn't do it anymore. But there I don't, was, I moved on. There was a time in your life. Give us one for old time's sake. Um, oh my God. <laughs> throw one out. Throw one down, baby. Okay, wait. It's hard for me to like, do these things like, it's on not. tea. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> do the moan. Oh, you're embarrassed now? Yeah, yeah it was not that it, it was, was it was more like that. Um, yeah that was it that's what it was that's what it was do that one don't do any of the other ones that's <laughs> that third one was 
not great. Um, <laughs> oh God, it was the van of my existence. That was Third the biggest thing. Like we really got, I really got. A, and you know what? I would talk to his other friends about. It. I'd be like, "Did he do that fucking?" They'd be like, "Fart mound." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He does it that. had to have been like a stress or like something like mechanic. Like I when I just go like. I don't actually that's even like weird even I don't know what it was but somehow I it was in it was ingrained in my you were about fucking you are about three more times away from being it's like the ABCs banned from being within a 200 yard basis of a elementary school <laughs> no you're just doing the fart now see you're embarrassed like you're embarrassed of your own but actions I don't because yes because I don't was it really that much of a moan I feel like it was Kyle like, yes Ugh. yes no you're acting like it was a breath it was a moan that sounds like turtles mating. You're so fucking annoying. Okay, great segue. What would you do if someone that... You, okay. Red lobster. <laughs> you meet someone that you're obsessed with. You're into them. You're like, I want to date this person. Okay. okay. <laughs> they pull their phone out. It's a Google Pixel. Absolutely not. What would you Run do? Run for the hills. What would you do? Run for the hills. What if you meet someone on Bumble? Kyle extended his bumble. Um, I don't know what this means because I've never had a bumble. But you, fish were in the sea. You like Fitting. loved what you saw in, in Miami so Miami. much that you extended. He literally like paid ten dollars to like keep his location in Miami for a week. Mm-hmm. Were there any prospects out of that? Nope. Damn it. Not okay. One. What if you like really fell in love with someone you were so obsessed with them from Bumble, and then you were like, "Here's my number. Text me." And then they texted you, and it was green. No. No, Kyle. Green, green is like a no. Like I. Green, what would you? Would you, really what, would you what would you say? I, Tell me what you would say because maybe you would think maybe they're in airplane mode. Maybe something else is going oh, on. Wait, that is true. See, I don't say? think about those things. I just see it and I'd be like, question mark. What would you say to them? Like, hey, what's up? Like, why are your messages green? Yeah, I'd be like, is there something going on here? I don't know. Like, I feel like I definitely investigate, but like, I feel like I get. I I really you Shannon you know but you, what's I would crazy really freak is, out and I would literally I just, like I would I I couldn't even like resp- like that's what truly funny. and I don't mean that in like a harsh he's way like not, I really would freak out I'd guys, be like I would think I'd getting like I was getting hacked or something he's not being funny we're gonna no, end the podcast like, here I, really did freak I know out. you guys are like he would come up with something funny to say back no he would screenshot it to me and go what the fuck what the fuck what the <laughs> fuck what the fuck do I do what the fuck do I do and I'd be like Kyle. The messages are green. It's not that big of a deal. You said you had a connection with them. Code like you red, loved cooking. it. Like you were having the best conversation. He'd be like, Shannon, what the fuck do I even say <laughs> back? Like you would freak no, out. No, I'd freak out. iPhones truly rule the world. They really do, Kyle. I okay, last change. question. What do you think about the Nashville um, STK? The Hobby Lobby art on the walls. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I used to, <laughs> I used to frequent that place. <laughs> why for happy hour for happy hour and the happy op- hour i will say is really good your office is above it yeah yeah and so the stk here is such a flop and i if you're coming to actually, nashville I went to the do vegas not one no no like, it was it's amazing incredible. the vegas one's amazing there's another location i've been to that's amazing they were opening they were saying they were opening one up in nashville we all lost our fucking marbles yeah it is from day yeah. one i don't know if they're i don't know if they're just absolutely tanking and losing money but they're like principal and pride won't let them like close down or if they're just booking enough bachelorette trips that it doesn't matter and they're like breaking even. But it Something's... is the worst restaurant in Nashville. No, yeah. Quote me on it. They reach out to influencers all the time. We're like, we'd love to offer you $4,000 to brunch. I'm like, I bet the fuck you would. <laughs> no, they never offer that much. But like, you know what I mean? They're always out here like, come to our brunch. And I'm like, nobody's coming. So go to Iberian Pig. Iberian Pig. Iberian Pig. Um, it's the place to be. Optimist. Oh my God, you know what? Next episode that you and I do, let's just do like a, everyone's always asking for a Nashville guide. Let's do a Nashville guide. Wait, sh- oh, I was going to say mukbang. <laughs> <gasps> I really did. The pickle. I really did. What, if I make it right now, pickle? if I make it right now, will you eat? What is the pickle? Will you eat a chamoy pickle with me? Is is that gout? <laughs> Safe. <laughs> I'm really on a thin line right now. <laughs> I do not think it's. Is, there, is sodium I, gout? I, 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 are you gonna Google is a chamoy pickle gout safe? Wait, but like I feel like people like eat those. They right? do, of course they do. Yeah, are I they... want to. Will you eat it with me, please? People put them like around like margaritas. <laughs> no, they, no they put they literally put chamoy around margaritas. Texas people, chime and I need you, and I, I can't hear you right now, but I know for a fact that you know that they put chamoy on. Chamoy is a flavoring. Margaritas. Chamoy is a flavoring. Yes, yes but the chamoy on. pickle on TikTok where they cover it in candy. Oh, what? <laughs> no, I have, I have not seen that. No. What? Do you have those on? You hand? know why you haven't seen that? Because you, <laughs> because your fucking TikTok for you page. We can't talk about it on here. You guys, we're going to have to end the podcast here. Follow along yeah. on Instagram or YouTube. I'm gonna do a chamoy pickle. Um, I'm gonna do a uh, what do you call it? I'm just gonna eat one on camera. Okay, so Kyle has too much Muck gout. Egg. He can't eat it. 
<laughs> I'll observe. It has candy in it. Can you not eat it if it has candy in it? What is there's candy in chamoy? <laughs> no. I thought it was just like tahin. Oh my god. With I'll syrup. show you later. I'll show you later. All right. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I'm like low key. I I'm like kind of fucked up. Um wait, really? Yeah, kinda. It's wait, fun. I love it. Should we cook dinner for James? Yeah. Let's no, do let's it. make him cook dinner for us. I'm gonna tell him wait, what is he doing? He's been so quiet. Good point. So respectful. I love it. He should be fucking cooking but dinner for us, doing? is what he should be doing. Okay. Um, love you so much with my whole heart. I love you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being <laughs> here. I love you so much. Welcome to the Ellen Show. <laughs> what an honor to be here. You guys, right before we started, he goes, Part well, of and, your world. <laughs> no, right before we started, he goes, Anyways, thanks again. Not on camera. He goes, thanks again for welcoming me, welcoming me into your world. And I was like, what the fuck, bitch? <laughs> Don't fucking ever say that shit to me I was again. in shock. I didn't know what to do. I saw so many cameras and lights. It was, it was Love wild. you so much. Tune in tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Next week is the very last episode for probably a podcast. Um, it's going to be a good one before we go on a five-week break. But we are not on a total break. If you guys want to come to a live show, we still have live show tickets available. We're going to be in the Midwest. We're going to be in the Bergs. We're going to be in Pittsburgh. We're going to be in Philly. We're going to be in Boston. We're going to be in Indy. Kansas City we're gonna be in fucking St. Louis Kyle will be at the St. Louis show St. Louis baby STL yes and of course on 420 light one up for me because we are a part of the Nashville Comedy Fest and by we I mean me myself and I I am performing at the T-Pack there are 1200 tickets there are plenty of seats left come support your girl